I'd like to move now to our uh, new segment, which is the future in a minute. I have a few questions to ask you, kind of rapid fire, and you'll give me rapid fire answers. First, what is one thing that gives you the most hope about the future? I think one of the things that gives me true hope is how much progress science has achieved compared to when I started to work in research and now. It's amazing. So things that when I was a grad student would be a whole five years PhD. Now an undergrad, a high school student can do them in a week. This is incredible. What is one thing you want people to walk away from this episode remembering? That aging and neurodegenerative diseases arise from molecular defects in the protein folding and quality control machinery and understanding that can lead to effective cures for all these diseases. Aside from money, what is the one thing you need to succeed in your research? I would say in addition to money now, knowing that I will have money next year or in two years or in three years, what is needed is young and not so young people that are excited and hungry to do science. But I think the lack of continuity discourages them, right? Because people want to know that if they embark on a career path that is very frustrating and very difficult, at least they know that in five years or 10 years, they'll have a job, a poorly paid and stressful job, but a job. And now the uncertainty is very discouraging for young people. And I think obviously what we need is young people to get into science. If all goes well, what does the future look like? Well, a future where in your 50s, you start to take some therapies that will slow Alzheimer or Parkinson or Huntington so people can have not just longer lives, but longer, healthier lives. And if you were starting over again and you needed to get your training or degree in a different discipline, what would that be? When I was in high school, I wanted to study archaeology. Now, there is a branch of archaeology where you can do genomics and kind of match historical records with population records. So you can really know what Roman society looked like, who were the Romans, who were the Sumerians, who were the ancient American civilizations. If I would start over now, I would do this mix of genomics and archaeology, because I think that's fascinating.